Dr. M. Tanvir uh, from IIT Indore. So he is going to talk uh, about uh, uh, assemble deep learning for Alzheimer's disease. So before starting his talk, so I would like to introduce him. So uh, Tanvir uh, is a associate professor at the Department of Mathematics of the Indian Institute of Technology in Dort. Prior to that, he worked as a postdoctoral research fellow at the Rolls-Royce uh, NTU uh, Corporate Lab of the NTU Singapore. He received his PhD degree in computer science uh, from the Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi, India. His research interest includes support vector machine optimization, machine learning, deep learning, applications to Alzheimer's disease and uh, dementia. He has published over 130 referred journal papers of international report. Uh, his publications have over uh, 1,500 uh, citations with H index 36. Recently, he has been listed in the world's top 2% scientist in the uh, study carried out by the Stanford University, USA. He is the recipient of 2023 IIT Indoor Research Excellence Award 2022. And 2022 Asia Pacific uh, Neural Network Society Young Researcher Award, uh, 29th uh, Iconic 2022 Best Research Paper Award, 2017 SCRB Early Career Research Award in Engineering uh, Sciences, and the only recipient of 2016 DST Ramanujan, uh, Ramanujan Fellowship in the Mathematical uh, Science. He is currently the uh, Associate X and Guest Editor of IEEE. Uh, T N N L S T F S T E T C I J V H I A C M Tom Elsewhere Springer. He has organized many international national conferences, symposium, workshop as a general chair, organizer chair, coordinator, and delivered talks as a keynote. Uh, plenty uh, plenary invited speaker in many international conferences and symposium. He has organized several. Special sessions in the top ranked conferences, including WCCI, IJCNN, IEEE SMC, IEEE SSCI, ICONIP, amongst other distinguished international conferences chairing roles. He was the general chair of 29th International Conference on uh, Neural Network Processing, ICONIP 2022. Tanvir is the principal investigator or co PI of 12 major research projects funded by the government of India including Department of Science and Technology, uh, Science and Engineering Research Board, SCRB, and Council of Science and Industrial Research, MHRD, SPARC, ICMR. He is elected, he's elected INSA Associate uh, Fellow and an IEEE CIS Distinguished Lecture from 2024 to 2026. Uh, so, uh, now, welcome, Sanveer San, once again. So it is our privilege that uh, uh, you have accepted and uh, you uh, you are giving this wonderful session. So thank you. Thank you very much. And now session is over to you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rakesh, uh, for uh, giving me an opportunity to deliver this talk. Unfortunately, I could not come. Uh, even I planned to come to your place, but uh, due to some reason I could not uh, come. So uh, I'll try to do my best to speak uh, something related to my recent work. So I'm now going to share my screen. Please just say OK if uh, you can see my slides. So please check. Yes, sir, your slide is visible. OK. Hmm. So thank you. Uh, so the plan for this talk is to discuss uh, basics and then advance uh, deep learning and ensemble deep learning algorithm uh, for Alzheimer's disease. So we have done extensive work specifically for the classification and predictions of Alzheimer's disease using several advanced uh, deep learning algorithms. So I'll just start with the thanks to my students who have done all this work. 
in the last uh, few years, which I'm going to present here today. So now I will start what is Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a progressive neurogenerative brain disorder. And it named after a named Dr. Alzheimer, who was the first to diagnose Alzheimer's disease in 1906. Uh, it is characterized by the accumulation of amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles in the brain. And uh, we usually see that it mostly common in individual age above 65 year old, and it causes cell damage and death in critical brain areas, impacting memory and cognitive functions. According to the report in uh, 2018, uh, it shows that around 50 million people were affected by this disease in 2018, and it is expected to be triple by 2050 in just after uh, 27 years. So one can see the uh, 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 how this disease is really dangerous and we need immediate cure and at least immediate uh, way to early detect of this disease. So these are a few symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, like the first is challenges in planning or solving problems, uh, confusing day from night, inappropriate use of words, mood changes, memory loss, and gradual loss of ability to perform normal task, loss of vision and coordination, inability to recognize and use familiar objects, if we look here that uh, we have the healthy brain with uh, Alzheimer's disease uh, brain, one can easily see on the uh, left side, which is healthy brain is very clear. And if you see that uh, Alzheimer's brain and the right hand side of this figure A, it's very clear that how it impact uh, uh, this disease uh, in the brain. Uh, similarly, we can see the cells, Alzheimer's cells and healthy brain cell scale from these two figures. Now, uh, I'll discuss that uh, neuroimaging techniques are crucial in the timely detection. So it has been a lot of work has be, uh, is undergoing uh, to early detect the early uh, this Alzheimer's disease and uh, several work is already has done by researchers for the classification and uh, prediction of brain age also. So now neuroimage analysis traditionally involve human experts such as radiologists and clinicians. However, the sheer volume of neuroimages poses challenges as the process is time consuming and vulnerable to human biases. Therefore, doctors and researchers harness ensemble and deep learning techniques to automatically discover useful features and interpret the neuroimages to enhance efficiency. In recent years, ensemble, uh, this uh, deep learning has rapidly become preferred tool for uh, neuroimage analysis to detect uh, Alzheimer's disease. So there are a few things that what we see that how this research impact the society. So early detection and intervention. So uh, we develop uh, recently uh, several deep learning and ensemble deep learning algorithms. And from the numerical experiment, we can see that uh, we, uh, our deep learning model facilitates early detection of Alzheimer's disease, which is crucial for timely intervention. And enhancing healthcare accessibility, the development of an accurate Alzheimer detection model contributes to making diagnostic tools more widely accessible, facilitating timely medical attention and support for affected individuals. Advancing research and understanding by leveraging deep learning algorithms, we contribute to a deeper understanding of Alzheimer's advancing both clinical applications and broader neurogenerative research. Now I'll start with the, the background of our research. So uh, this figure uh, is based on the ensemble deep learning. So this is the first 
comprehensive review paper in the literature on ensemble deep learning. So one can see that uh, this paper published uh, last year and uh, it has been cited more than 600 times. So we know that ensemble learning combines several individual models to obtain better generalization performance currently. Deep learning architectures are showing better performance compared to the shallow or traditional models. Uh, deep ens ensemble learning models combine the advantage of both deep learning as well as ensemble learning such that the final model has a better generalization performance. So this comprehensive review paper uh, uh, essentially review the state of art deep ensemble models and hence serve as an extensive summary for the researchers. The ensemble models are broadly categorized into bagging, boosting, stacking, negative correlation based deep learning, deep ensemble models, explicit, implicit ensemble, homogeneous, heterogeneous ensemble, decision fusion strategies based on deep ensemble models. And then finally, applications of ensemble deep learning in healthcare, speech, image classification, forecasting, and several other domains. And finally, we conclude uh, this work with some potential future research directions. So please see this paper if uh, you are working in deep learning or ensemble deep learning. Now, uh, uh, this is also the first review paper on random vector functional link in the literature. So uh, we uh, published recently in 2023. So a lot of work has been done in RVFL uh, since 1994. Uh, but uh, this is the first review paper, I think, after 29 years. <clears throat> that has done extensive uh, review. So are we, we know that RBFL model has several characteristics such as uh, fast training speed, direct links, simple architecture, and universal approximation capability that uh, make it viable randomized neural network. Uh, this review paper present the essentially, as I mentioned, the first comprehensive review of the evolution of our VFL model. Uh, and uh, it can serve as an extensive uh, sur uh, summary uh, for the beginners as well as even advanced researchers. Here, we discuss the shallow RVFL, ensemble RVFL, and a deep RVFL, and ensemble deep RVFL models. And the variations, improvements, and applications of RVFL models have been discussed here. So further, we discuss the different parameter optimization techniques followed in the literature to improve the generalization performance of the RVFL model. And uh, finally, we present potential future research directions that can inspire the researchers to improve the RVFL architecture and learning algorithm further. So uh, this is just the background that uh, there are several uh, types of uh, neural uh, network archi architectures depending on the structure, internal functioning and applications. Generally, uh, an artificial neural network training phase is an iterative process in which all the parameters are adjusted using back propagation approach. There are few limitations that slow convergence and it may fail to attain global minima and very sensitive to the learning rate. So this is what we can see in the picture that we have the biological neurons, artificial neurons, and then uh, architecture of artificial neural network. So now uh, there is another family of neural networks known as randomized neural network. As I explained here, that one architecture is our VFL review we have written recently. So 
a randomized neural network with closed form solution avoid the shortcoming of conventional back propagation based training neural networks uh, uh, this randomized neural network has simple architectures with strong mathematical foundations and effective data modeling capability and uh, in rnn randomized neural network like rvfl and uh, extreme learning machines some of the parameters are fixed while training either in stochastic or deterministic fashion and the rest parameters are optimized via closed form or iterative methods so some of the advantage of randomized based uh, uh, methods that it has less computational cost fast training speed and better generalization for, for performance so uh, this is what uh, we can see uh, this is the uh, run uh, rvfl formulation uh, random functionally that is a randomized version of a single hidden layer feed forward neural network here we have the three layers uh, i think yeah we can see first uh, this architecture of uh, rvfl so this rvfl architecture has three layers known as input layer uh, hidden layer and uh, output layers all three layer consist of neurons connected to via weights to avoid the implementation of the back propagation algorithm the weights from the input layer to the hidden layer are generated randomly from a given domain and kept fixed during the training process so all the output weights are anal analytically completed by the least square method or pseudo inverse method so in rvfl original features are given as input to output layer via direct links and the direct links improve the generalization performance of rvfl so mathematically uh, we can see that we have the optimization problem with the l hidden nodes uh, as we have the first uh, optimization problem where beta h and y uh, are mentioned here that beta is the output ma uh, weight matrix h is a concatenated matrix of input data and outputs from the enhancement nodes and y capital y is a target matrix and h and beta can be written here that h is h1 h2 and the size is n cross d plus l and beta is the solution uh, of this optimization problem okay so now moving ahead that uh, we have another architecture called a deep version of random vector functional link so this is essentially an extension of the shallow rvfl network in the context of uh, representation learning or deep learning the drvfl network is a characterized by a stack hierarchy of hidden layers as shown in this figure the input to each layer in the stack is the output of the preceding layer wherein each layer builds an internal representation of the input data although the stack hierarchical organization of hidden layers in the rvfl network allows general flexibility in the size both in width and depth of the network for the sake of simplicity here we just consider a stack of l hidden layers each of which contains the same number of hidden nodes that is n so we can see uh, mathematical structures that output of the first hidden layer is defined as uh, in equation 3 that h1 equal to 5 x w1 and the output of the higher layers can be expressed in this manner that h i equal to phi of h i minus 1 w i where phi is a known constant activation function and w belongs to this uh, vector uh, of order d cross h l uh, so finally we have the output layer gets the input data with k hidden layers feature and it is defined in the equation 5 h star so mathematically the output parameter beta of deep rvfl network is calculated similar to standard rvfl now now we further 
move uh, to the ensemble deep rvfl network so essentially the framework of ensemble deep rvfl network as shown here in this figure it serves three purpose so the first is instead of using only the higher level representation feature extracted from the final hidden layer of the data as in conventional deep learning model for classification it employ which intermediate features also for final decision making second advantage is the ensemble is obtained by training a single deep rvfl network once with training slightly higher than that of a single deep rvfl but cheaper than training several independent models of deep rvfl now and the third is like deep rvfl the ensemble deep rvfl frameworks is generic and any rvfl variant can be used with it so uh, this was the meaning of this ensemble uh, deep rvfl uh, network so and the architecture is essentially uh, we can see that from this in uh, architecture one can see that the purpose of uh, this deep rvfl plus uh, okay so now we can move ahead so like uh, we reach this ensemble deep rvfl so mathematically we can just write in the similar manner that is we can represent first layer and uh, ith layer and the final output is also similar to standard rvfl as we have seen for the deep rvfl okay now uh, uh i'll discuss uh, another variant using ensemble deep rvfl but uh, with the concept of loopy loopy is learning using privilege uh, information means uh, it help us to give us the advanced information about the distribution of data so let me Uh, so what happens here deep rvfl network using privilege information as developed here and uh, ensemble deep rvfl using privilege information loopy uh, is developed means uh, deep rvfl based and ensemble deep rvfl based both we developed uh, uh, with the motivation of uh, ad rvfl and deep rvfl so ensemble model is trained in a manner that higher layers of model utilize the original information as well as the non linear projected features from the lower layer to train the network so let me let us first discuss the architecture here so this is the architecture of deep rvfl plus so what it it says so it says that from the this architecture one can see that the purpose uh, this deep rvfl plus d rvfl plus uh, we have two components one is a normal information that is the left side and the right hand side is a privilege information and the left side that is normal information is processed through l number of hidden layers with each layer receiving the input from the previous layer so here we follow a rectangular structure wherein the number of nodes in each hidden layer is fixed to n and the weights and biases uh, given by here wi or bi are generated randomly and kept fixed so and uh, here uh, right hand side privilege information is also generated by uh, l layer architecture wherein we input the original features however privilege component of the given architecture uses separate set of weights and biases uh like w tilde i or b tilde i which are generated randomly and again it kept fixed and here different activation uh used in the privilege component so similar to normal component we fix the rectangular component with n number of hidden nodes in each hidden layer of the l layer architecture and mathematically uh, we can see that uh, we skip the bias the notation the first hidden layer can be written is h1 and hi layer 
is this and finally we concatenate the input matrix to the output layer and we represent this d and uh, output of the first privilege hidden layer is h tilde 1 and then corresponding higher privilege layers can be represented as h tilde i and concatenate uh, input to the output layer in the similar manner we can calculate in equation 13 and the output weights beta of uh, deep RVFL plus are optimized by solving uh, optimization problem 14 and the optimal weights finally get it in equation 15. And uh, now further we also see ensemble deep uh, RVFL variant using a uh, loopy learning using privilege information. So essentially concatenation of all projections of hidden layers in a single matrix in deep RVFL plus executed the complexity of the algorithm. So to overcome that issue here, we developed X ensemble approach that is EDR VFL plus. So it utilized the intermediate features unlike the conventional multi-layer architecture, which results in improved generalization performance. And the proposed uh, this architecture uh, is composed again two components. I can show here that left and right. Well, left is a normal uh, information, and uh, right hand side is a privilege information. So the uh, input to the normal component are the original features processed by l number of hidden layers, each having n number of nodes, and each hidden layer receive the input as the output of the preceding layer and the original features. And uh, we can see the uh, similar way that uh, output of the first uh, hidden layer is represented in equation 16 and higher uh, layers can be represented as HI and output of the first hidden layer H tilde I and uh, similarly exactly on the same manner we write and output weights are optimized via closed form solutions. So uh, in the same manner, we also have the privilege information. It also generated by L layer architecture, wherein uh, we input the original features. Uh, here, a privilege in component of the given architecture use separate set of weights and biases. So, and they are generated randomly and kept fixed and the different activation functions are used in the privilege in a component. So similar to normal part, we fix the rectangular component with the n number of hidden nodes in each hidden layer of the L layer architecture. And uh, each privilege hidden layers receive the input as the output of the previous privilege layer and the original features. So, and output of the first hidden layer, exactly we have done in the same manner. So I'm not going to discuss the same information in detail. Okay. So this is the architectures of uh, EDR VFL plus. Okay. Now uh, we focused uh, this uh, algorithm for Alzheimer's disease. So we have essentially uh, three cases. That is we have control normal CN and we have MCI uh, mild cognitive impairment means just before Alzheimer's disease and finally AD, Alzheimer's disease patients. So we had done all the cases CN versus AD, AD versus MCI. So we have uh, disc and we have considered different activation functions and we have taken different variants of uh, RVFL like RVFL, deep RVFL, ED RVFL and uh, it's all privilege information uh, variant like RVFL plus, deep RVFL plus, and ADR VFL plus. So, uh, and we see that uh, the uh, these, the proposed variants, deep RVFL plus and ADR VFL plus, the performance uh, on Alzheimer's disease data, which is publicly available, we used uh, uh, ADNI, which is publicly available US data. So we see that uh, the performance is really very good. Even if you see the results here, 
CN versus MCI. So uh, in this case also, the results even are uh, better. Uh, and this is the, the most difficult case, MCI versus AD. Means it's very difficult to distinguish this case. So, but we can see that uh, the performance is really promising here. Means you can see that this is uh, AUC is like 59%, but our purpose is going to be 65% or 64%. It's too high. Means uh, so one can just use it uh, for data. So this algorithm works very well. <clears throat> so. And uh, I think I have mentioned that uh, this work is already published uh, uh, here, yes, uh, last year in IEEE or ACM transactions on computational biology and bioinformatics. So more details are available there. So please uh, just use this paper for more information. Okay. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Otherwise, I'm discussing now another uh, component of uh, my talk is graph uh, embedded ensemble uh, deep randomized network for diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. OK. Hmm. OK, so now what we have done here. So this is also very recent work. We uh, proposed uh, using graphs. Sir, uh, Anvir, yes. sir, there's one comment on the chat box. Uh, let me see. Well, link of the paper is available. OK, OK, OK. Okay, sir. Uh, I hope it's yes. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. So now I'll discuss the uh, graph embedded approach with ensemble deep RVFL and uh, applications to Alzheimer's disease. So essentially a randomized shallow or deep neural network with closed form solution avoid the shortcoming that uh, exists in back propagation based training neural networks and ensemble deep rvfl as discussed today uh, it utilizes the strength of two growing fields that is deep learning and ensemble learning so however what we see that ensemble deep rvfl model doesn't consider the geometric relationship of the data while calculating the final output parameters corresponding to each layer considered as base model so in the literature graph embedded frameworks have been successfully used to describe the geometric relationship within data so here, our idea is to develop an extended graph embedded uh, RVFL model that unlike uh, standard RVFL uh, that employ both intrinsic and penalty subspace learning criteria under the graph embedded framework in its optimization process to calculate the uh, model output parameters. So, and uh, this, algorithm essentially only single hidden layer and less representation learning and further we also develop its deep variants so further we also develop an ensemble deep variants of uh, the same work and that can be considered as a variant of ensemble deep rvfl model so but unlike uh, ensemble deep rvfl uh, our idea solve graph embedded based optimization problem in each layer and hence better performance than the baseline EDRVFL. 
and then we develop uh, we had done a lot of experiment specifically for uh, uh, on alzheimer disease neuroimaging initiative data adni data and uh, our experiment shows uh, the better performance so now let's see first how uh, the algorithm is and then we'll discuss <clears throat> so here uh, the standard rvfl doesn't consider as i mentioned the geometric aspects of the data while optimizing the output hence uh, lower performance so the optimization problem of the proposed one this is the shallow uh, proposed one as defined in equation 20 so here the first term represent the empirical error and second term represent the graph regularization term and the last term it shows the regularization term and the both regularization parameter lambda and mu it handle the impact of these two regularization terms so more details are available in this paper so one can refer for more details okay and the final solution can be written in equation 21 so after calculating this uh, matrix beta weight matrix so output of graph embedded rvfl for a new sample is taken similar to a uh, standard rvfl so uh, if you look at the theory of graph embedded so in graph embedding framework there is an undirected weighted graph that is uh, x comma sigma this where their input and similarity matrix and each element in a matrix this uh, symbol sigma represent the relationship between two graph vertices moreover another penalty gp uh, so here each element of the weight sigma p penalty weights that are given to a specific relationship between the graph vertices in x and the optimization problem of the graph embedding is defined here in equation 22. So here what we see that uh, here some information about this are given. So essentially the solution of the problem is obtained by solving this problem 23. And the matrix S consider both intrinsic and penalty graph relationship within the data set. So this is the flow chart of uh, the shallow uh, embedded graph uh, uh, RVFL approach that we have the original feature space X and we just extend the feature space and we have the randomized feature space. We concatenate and calculate the matrix S and then train it and get the output like this and these are the numerical experiments uh, of both that is uh, the shallow network and its ensemble deep uh, network so one can see that uh, we have considered uh, here the first one is control normal that is healthy with the alzheimer disease and we had uh, considered different activation functions and we have considered baseline RVFL, deep RVFL, ensemble deep RVFL and uh, here three and four. So we denote uh, the value of the randomly selected parameter and feature generation methods and uh, then here they are uh, means the last four column are essentially the proposed models. So, but we see that uh, what, whatever we are considering different activation functions. So, what we observe that uh, most of the time, the proposed approaches, the last four columns are performing well. Even if you look at another, another case, CN versus MCI case. So, and here also the last four column are the proposed uh, approaches. So we can see that uh, uh, while considering different uh, uh, methods so and different activation functions, so we again see uh, the performance is quite uh, impressive. And this is, as I mentioned, it's a difficult case MCI versus uh, AD. 
So, and here we can also see that this, especially this one, AGE RBFL, uh, uh, this case, and we can see it uh, shows uh, promising results, means uh, throughout. So, now one can think of uh, choosing this uh, algorithm uh, for the classification of Alzheimer's disease data sets. We also have done some experiments on UCI and Keel data sets. And uh, we can see that based on this, and we see the average rank uh, of uh, like EGE or VFL. So we can see that uh, they are really good. Some of them are really good, like uh, e Ensemble Deep One are uh, performing very well when we are considering UCI and Keel data sets. So I think uh, uh, one can just refer uh, uh, these algorithms and uh, codes are publicly available. I think uh, I can check it uh, if you are able to see my slide. So I can show that uh, all the codes are publicly available. So if you, you can find out my GitHub repository, so you can find out that codes are available so one can just go and use it so uh, in case of any difficulty in the implementation so we are happy to help so uh, you can drop an email whatever is mentioned in the readme file so usually uh, a students email id are given who has written the code so he will help Okay, and now these are the future uh, possible directions specifically uh, for uh, Alzheimer's disease. So a lot of scopes are there, like uh, uh, significant brain region extractions and bridge age difference with cognitive decline, integration of multimodality and identification uh, novel biomarkers and adversarial perturbation and certainty estimation and ensemble deep architectures. I think I can show, I think even more better. Uh, so uh, this we have taken uh, from this paper, uh, IEEE transactions on cognitive and development uh, systems. This is especially spe deep learning uh, based uh, diagnosis and prognosis of Alzheimer's disease. It's also a comprehensive review. So, one can see that a lot of scope are available to work on this. Now, this is another very interesting work. So, this is also the first approach to uh, write a review for the brain age estimation. So, and this work has been published recently in one journal called information fusion in elsewhere so and this is just one picture i'm mentioning uh, uh, different kind of uh, mm, possible directions here like uh, explainability is one of the major concern that explainability in deep learning for brain age estimation so essentially no information about input output relationship while working in a deep variance so explainable AI can explain the relationship that can be helpful for clinical purpose and practical adoption of the model. So now this is a hot area and many people are working on explainable AI, uh, especially deep variants. So, uh, so very less work has been done, I think, uh, only a few papers are there in the literature and it will be very helpful for the doctors to take early decision if we are able to explain the information about the input and output information about the data. So that are lacking in current uh, deep variants. And adversarial perturbation and uncertainty estimation. So. Uh, if we, uh, one can develop robust and safe deep learning network from adversarial perturbation 
and one can focus on uncertainty estimation for deep learning and uh, then a deep learning architecture that specialized ensemble deep learning architectures that can be used for improved predictions and a benchmark among deep variants uh, for brain age estimation is also in need so which algorithm can be used for brain age so it is also essential to do kind of comprehensive evaluation of several uh, available uh, deep algorithms this is also another future uh, scope and integration of multi model data that uh, brain age difference also depends on other factors like uh, iron deposition brain connectivity and metabolic uh, variations and it also combined with other modalities that can provide new biomarkers so one can work in this directions and uh, another very important is the brain age difference with cognitive decline this is also a uh, very important area for research that the association of brain age difference to mental health means uh, a person is having uh, some brain disease and a healthy person so and how much is the age difference with both brains and brain region affected due to alzheimer parkinson and other different neurological disorder disease so this really uh, challenge to work in that direction i think one of the biggest uh, issue here uh, in india to get the right data so this is one of the challenge but uh, one can really look and uh, talk to clinical people who can really help us to give the data and work for the society and significant brain region extraction so we can identify specific brain regions related to age gap and uh, one can also study the effect of age group and gender on the regions affected the brain age okay so my technical talk is uh, almost over i'm happy to take a few questions and uh, i would like to invite uh, for uh, this special issue uh, on the same theme that uh, this is deep learning for healthcare so and it is in ieee transactions on fuzzy systems this is also very top journal uh, deadline is very close 28th february if uh, you have not started and you want to work so please we are happy to uh, welcome your submissions in this special issue okay so these are a few reference what we have taken and uh, now thank you so much so i can take a few questions now yes so thank you tanvir sir for your excellent talk so uh, so can i read sir some questions uh, the participant have posted on the chat box mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes so uh, this is this question is from the sunita so sir i, I have three base models trend individually on data set i want to improve the accuracy of the model while using uh, ensembling ensemble so will you please explain the implementation procedure uh, okay i think uh, i think it's better uh, sunita if you uh, the codes are publicly available and all the informations are given for the implementation so please go through the codes in case of any issue so we are happy to help in the implementation uh, so but uh, if you go and see the readme file so you will find uh, all possible information but again if you feel any difficulty yes please uh, drop an email to us hmm? so a few more questions on the chat box <laughs> one person is writing i emailed you but 
sir unfortunately you are not replying kindly share your email that will be your most kindness i think my email id is same please check it i don't remember uh okay okay my email id is just m tanveer okay m tanveer at iiti.ac.in uh possibly i can show somewhere uh i may have written my email id yeah if you are able to see this is my email id m tanveer at iiti.ac.in okay so okay next question is it required to retrain the model again after ensemble i'm not sure which for what you are talking about uh, could you guide some resources to learn to work on ai neuroscience both neuroscience background techniques in neuro data processing i think uh, my suggestion is i have explored those work in my slide like uh, i discussed uh, uh, let me let me show quickly that uh, this is one very efficient work if you want to go for deep learning and neuroscience this is one approach very recent work deep learning for brain age so it's a comprehensive review excellent review so please go through this paper okay and uh, we also have another uh, review i discussed this one and this is diagnosis and prognosis of zam disease comprehensive review so please uh, read uh, these papers if you really said especially uh, human brain disorder disease brain age estimation or alzheimer disease so we also have done uh, right one review of parkinson so you are welcome to read that paper also i'm not sure whether i can show it to you now so difficult to find out uh, uh yeah this one uh, you can see this is parkinson disease diagnosis with deep and shallow neural networks survey and comprehensive evaluation so i have shown three work one in uh, uh deep learning for alzheimer disease one is deep learning for brain age estimation and this is parkinson parkinson disease for uh, uh deep and shallow both okay so any question so participants if you have any questions please ask so and we sir i think no more questions so thank you very much sir for your wonderful sessions